In this video, we're going to get into topography, forms, and tables. So we're going to start with the very basics. Uh, let's start with creating some headings and see what those look like. So I have my index.html file here, and I'm linking to bootstrap.css. We have a container div here, and inside here, let's just put in an h1. We'll say headings, and I just want to give you an example of all the different sizes of headings. So I'm just copy that. Just change this out. And you can kind of use this file as a reference. Alright, so if we look at the headings, that's what each heading looks like, H1 through H6. Now we can use secondary text as well. So if we were to say H1, say welcome, and inside the H1 we can put a small tag. And this would be secondary text. Okay, so that would look like that. All right, now paragraphs. Go ahead and just put in a normal paragraph, and I'm just going to grab some, uh, just some dummy text to throw in there. Okay, so nothing special, just have a paragraph. And if we want to kind of uh, emphasize this and make it a little bigger without actually changing the font size, we could go ahead and add a class called Lead. And now if I reload, you can see that it's it's a little bigger and more prominent. All right, we can also use tags in here like mark if we want to highlight some text. Okay, so if we were to look at that, you can see that that text is now highlighted. Uh, we can use del, D-E-L. And if we look at that, you can see that that puts a line through the text. All right, so just some simple things you can do to kind of dress it up a little. Uh, now, alignment, let's go ahead down here. And I'm just going to put a, a heading. Each part we get into, I'm going to just put an H1 so we know what, what we're dealing with. So this will be alignment. And what we'll do is put in a paragraph. Let me just grab some text. All right, so if we want, we can put in the class of text left. And if we take a look at that, you can see that, well, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really, it's not any different because left is the default. But let me copy this and we'll change this to text right. And then you can see that this text is now aligned to the right. Okay, we can also do centered. If we do text center, which I use quite a bit, it's centered to the middle. Uh, we can also use justify. Which, in this case, doesn't look any different than the left. But we can justify it. We can also use no wrap. So text no wrap which also you can't really tell let me just add some more text in here maybe that can give us a good example okay so see that it's not wrapping it's just it just keeps going if I were to take that class off of there then it would wrap all right so those are just some alignment uh, classes we can use we also have transformation classes Okay, so let's do paragraph. We'll give this a class of text, lowercase. So no matter what I put in here, even if I do all uppercase, you can see that it gets transformed to lowercase. All right, and we can do the same thing with text uppercase. Okay, and then we can also do text capitalize.
And what text capitalize does is it just takes the first letter of the word and capitalizes it. Okay, so just some really simple but helpful classes. Okay, we also have block quotes. I'm just going to go ahead and put a block quote tag. And let's just paste a paragraph in there. And that's what the block quote looks like. See, so you have this nice little border on the left here. We can also do a reverse block quote. So if I copy this whole thing, and let's just give this a class of block quote reverse and that's going to put that border on the right side of it and the text on the left. All right, so now let's get into lists. So we're going to go ahead and put in a UL All right, so if we look at that, you can see that it doesn't look any different than a regular list. And I'm not going to get into list groups yet. That's going to come later on when we look at the CSS components. But this is just a standard list. Now, in a lot of the cases, you'll want to remove the bullet, and you'll also want to remove that initial padding there. So to do that, we can just add a simple class to the UL called list unstyled. All right, if we do that, reload, now you can see that the bullet's gone, and so is that padding. All right, and we can nest lists if we want. For instance, we'll put in here a UL. We'll just grab one of these. Okay, if I reload, now you can see we have a nested list. And that unstyled doesn't pertain to nested list. You'd have to actually add it like this. Okay, but if you do that, it's just going to blend in with the other, the rest of the list items. So it's kind of pointless. Okay, so tables. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and add a table here. I'm going to put in an H1. Did I put an H1 for list? Yeah, I did. All right, so tables, we'll go ahead and add a table tag. And let's add a table row. And inside here, we're going to have our headings. So table heading. And let's say first name, last name. and email all right and then down here we'll have a table row and we want some columns which are td so we'll just say john doe okay and i'm just going to copy this table row right here Okay, so if we save this and reload, this is what a table is going to look like by default. Now, if we go up here and we add a class, let's add a class of table, save it, reload, and you can see that that makes the world of a difference. Okay, this looks much better, much cleaner, just by adding a class of table. Okay, now there's a few things we can do with table. We can make it striped if we want to add another class of table. Uh, dash striped and what that'll do is it'll make every other row gray give it a gray background so that, that looks pretty nice and we can also add a class of table hover if we do that and then as we hover over each element here you can see that it turns gray okay we can also do if we want to make it a little more condensed we can use a class called table condensed reload and now you can see that
there's less uh, spacing inside of the cells. We also have contextual styles. So let's say uh, for one of these rows, we want to make give it a green background. We could go to a TR and put in a class of, let's say, success. Reload, and now you can see we have a green background. Let's say this one right here, we want to give it a class of danger. And that'll give it a red background. And these contextual classes, these exist throughout all different types of elements, buttons, uh, table rows, alerts, things like that. All right, next thing we're going to do is forms. Let's do H1. Okay, and what we're going to do here is just create a simple form. Now you want to wrap your form fields in a div with the class of form group. Okay, so in this form group, let's put a label. We'll say name for this field and then an input. And the type will be text. And then we want to give it a class of form control. Okay, that'll give that'll give it some padding and extend the input 100%. Okay, if we go ahead and save that and reload, you can see our text field here looks pretty nice. It goes all the way across. It's got some padding, got some box shadow. All right, let's say we wanted to also have an email. Copy that. Do email. Okay, there we got another text. And let's say maybe a password. We can change the type here to password. Okay, so those are those are text and password fields. Now if we want to have let's say a select, we can do that. I'm just gonna paste this in and then replace this with select. Uh, and let's also give this a class of form control. And then we'll just put some options. Oh, um, oh this should be value. Okay, so that's a select. Take a look at that. You can see that also stretches across the whole area. Uh, what else? We have checkbox we can do. For that, let's do div class equals checkbox. And then we'll just put in label. And then we'll put the checkbox inside that. So input type checkbox. And we'll just have the text checkbox. Okay, so there we have a simple form, simple checkbox field, and then we'll have a submit. So right here we could say input type equals submit and value equals submit. Okay, we could add a class to that. Let's say class btn default, and I'll get into buttons uh, in the next video. But you can see now we have a submit button there and it actually needs BTN and BTN default. And you can see it gives it a nice clean look. We can also have inline forms. And let me just show you an example. If we go to get bootstrap and then CSS and then forms. Okay, this is basically what we just did uh, inline form here. So if we want to grab this and copy. Put a couple line breaks here. Throw that in. And there we have a inline form. So that would be good for something like a login or a search box. All right, so I think that that'll do it for this video. In the next video, we are going to get into more CSS components such as buttons and button groups, alerts, panels, things like that. So I will see you in the next video.